All right, thank you all for coming. Uh, is, this, is this okay? Do I speak here? Okay. Um, so, thank you for coming to Creativity Can Compete. Um, I've designed... <laughs> oh. Today's talk, we're going to be looking at something called value strategy. And what that means is how can we look at our games and look at our marketing strategies and put them together to create value for ourselves and for gamers. Um, so about me, <laughs> thanks for giggling. Uh, <laughs> Um, my name's Emily. I have a master's in marketing from Melbourne Uni. Ooh la la. My life before games, I was a uh, marketing in corporate engineering and engineering journalism. I worked in comms last year for GCAP 2017. And currently, I'm the marketing and studio manager of Spree Entertainment, which is a little studio out in Box Hill working on Fiend Legion, a cool monster CCG. So I'm also the program coordinator for the IGDA Scholars. So hello to any of you in the audience. And just uh, my personal note, I love me some surrealist memes, vines, doggos, and rocks. So maybe after this, you can actually ask me about my rock collection. Okay, well, that's the wrong way. So why value? Um, I'm gonna take a look at my notes. This is not well done. So, the reason why I wanted to talk about value today is because when we talk about value, we talk about competition. What we want to highlight is that what we're making now in Australia, our games are good, but they may not necessarily be competitive. And this talk is to talk you through like the difference between what is a good game and what is a competitive game. Um, so, so that doesn't mean that we have to compromise our visions. Value add strategies are about looking at what we want to create, looking at the stories that we want to tell, and then adding things on, creating systems and processes to build the value to support it. The reason why I have um, this picture uh, from my engineering days, back when I was mad cool, um, um, is that value strategy and creating value is about creating a stable foundation for our games. So when we lay a skyscraper and when we lay a house, we don't just put the concrete down. We reinforce the concrete, we reinforce the foundation with steel so it acts as a skeleton, so it acts as support so things don't fall apart, so it doesn't start to crack and crumble. And the issue that we have now is that in this industry, the foundation for our house could crumble because we don't have anything to support it. So that's what this talk is designed for. When I say it's marketing design, it's a game design talk, what I mean is I'm not actually going to talk to you about literal game design. That was just to get you in the door. Okay? <laughs> okay, know your audience. Um, <laughs> we're not also going to talk about art either. This is a hardcore marketing talk, so get ready. Um, <laughs> um, what was I saying? <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so the point of the game design note is that marketing does not exist in isolation. When we say you need to start marketing from day one, this talk is what we mean. This is a positioning talk. So when we say marketing doesn't exist in isolation, it means it's not something that you do. It's something that is, right? It's an ecosystem. We want you to design marketing like you would sit down and design video games. You're designing systems, you're designing processes 
to communicate the value of what you're creating. So in that sense, you are designing your game. It's a part that you ignore, it's a part that you pretend doesn't exist because you don't understand, and I totally get that. Um, but this talk today is about introducing you to some topics, to some uh, strategies that you can use to kind of sit down and start designing that side of your game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what the talk will go through today, kiddos. Uh, first of all, we're going to do a marketing recap because although GCAP is supposed to be for intermediate to advanced level, I bet none of you know what marketing is. So, <laughs> um, then we're also going to go over what value is and how we can analyze, evaluate, and leverage it. Um, I'm going to give you three differentiation strategies to help fortify competition. Uh, then we're going to go over value propositions and give a tasty example. I'm going to give a dramatic summary speech, Q&A, and then I assume you're all going to praise me in the corridor. Um, <laughs> thank you for laughing. <laughs> So let's uh, quickly go through and recap what I mean when I say marketing. Um, so marketing is a series of complex information and design structures coordinated to create, communicate, and deliver value with the objective to achieve personal, organizational, or societal goals. So basically, we're taking a systematic approach to designing an information ecosystem using IT and software tools to create an integrated, consistent, and, con and clear message. This is what we mean when we say integrated marketing communications or convergence. What we're talking about is using all the tools and processes at your disposal to communicate one message over many channels that works together and works to build value and understanding between your business and the consumer. <clears throat> okay, I'll also say, <laughs> apologies for this talk looking like a year nine made it. Uh, I'm great at writing, visual communication is not my like core competency, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> So this is previously on marketing. This is a recap of everything you're going to need to know. Now, I want to do a little disclaimer, disclaimer, sorry, and say like this is very, very simplified and not exactly what you will be using. This is just for the purpose of this talk. This is an idea of what you would do at what stage of production. Um, so we're going to be focusing on the value analysis and differentiation stage, which I've starred right up there. They are in the first stage, analysis and um, <clears throat> positioning. So they're the first things you think of. Um, notes. Okay. Let's look for a minute at promotion because it's going to come back up when we talk about differentiation strategies. I want to quickly make a note of the social media and community management dot point. So in promotion, you'll see I've got user acquisition. All things are user acquisition now. Because of what I just said about like convergence and everything working together, you can't say, oh, community management is not part of user acquisition. This is not user acquisition. This is just building the brand or building our game. Everything is part of user acquisition. And I think that there's a tendency um, among our industry to kind of not use community management to the detriment of ourselves. So I feel like it's a hugely valuable um, aspect of game development that we need to be working on. And it also is like really important. So if we remember the user acquisition funnel, it is the bottom tier, right? The most important tier of user acquisition retention is community management. That will help you keep your users and then they will tell other people about it. So we're also going to talk about value propositions, so pitching. So we're using the value analysis and the differentiation strategies within the positioning product development stage to develop a value proposition that we can then use to pitch our game to investors, to publishers, to the general public. Um, and let's move on. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to marketing strategy. So this is a basic marketing strategy like graph thing. So we're going to be focusing on differentiation and focus. So marketing is very 
complicated and very, very large. So what I'm doing today for this talk is like hand picking the most appropriate strategies uh, that I think are applicable to indie game dev and kind of working from there. Um, so in this case, uh, differentiation for mass market. So we're gonna be looking at the differentiation strategies later on, but basically like creating a product that has different value offerings than what is standard. For, um, <clears throat> for indies, I think niche is really important to take note of. We've had huge success in the niche market focus. So what that means is basically like, <clears throat> if you know your audience, if you have a particular audience in mind and can create a product for them, that is a strategy for success. If you want to target everyone, if you want a game that gets mass market appeal, you need to look at employing differentiation strategies to value add, to boost the offering of what you're, what you're getting. Um, I'm gonna add here, because I think I forgot to mention it before, about when we talk about um, like adding value and differentiation, what I mean is like, okay, so look at the industry trends. I think we're moving forward into an area where we're going to need to not look at ourselves as game developers, but entertainment businesses, right? So when we talk about like adding value and strategies for this, we're looking at how can we create value outside of the game? Because at the moment, the market is very saturated, right? It's very hard to get people to discover what you're creating and to, even if you have that niche appeal, even if you found your people, it still can be very hard to get onto distribution platforms and get them to find you. So what we're doing is creating a larger ecosystem of value to kind of boost um, awareness, boost appeal, um, just get people maybe that you wouldn't have necessarily targeted for your game. They might come in at different elements. And I'm gonna talk about that when we talk about differentiation strategies. But let's go over, okay, that was marketing. This is value. Um, we're gonna go over how to identify existing sources of value, options for creating value, um, and how to pick the value you want and create it. AKA the thing I've been talking about a lot, being how to differentiate yourself and boost competition. Um, <clears throat> then we're gonna go over value propositions. <laughs> Okay, how to, how to identify existing value. This is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, <laughs> what you need to do is look at yourself, look at the business that you have existing, look at the IP that you have, look at your game. And you need to ask yourself, what do you have? Look at your resources. What allows you to compete in the market? What allows you to adapt to change? What allows you to streamline production? What allows you to help deliver value or perceived value on the consumer side? What allows you to provide access to a variety of markets and is difficult to imitate? Now, this could be something like HR. You could have a really cool, famous person on your team that is gonna be, like, has a following, has fans, and they can bring value to your company and you can leverage that. Um, it can also be things like, like operational, like do you have an excellent production line? Can you save costs there? Um, <clears throat> can be company culture. Do you have a company culture that gamers really dig? Do you have a company culture that they can identify with? Um, what do you have existing that you can use as a foundation to build value? What do you have existing that, secondly, you, can, you have the capabilities to, to use? So when we talk about um, adding value, you need to keep in mind that this idea of scale, scope, and capability should always be there. If you identify a resource, 
It's no good to you if you don't have the capability to use it. So what are you actually able to do with that core competency? Can you leverage that person? Or are they under some secret NDA or we can't tell anybody that yet? Or do you have like too many costs so that you're like the optimization in the production line is not really something that you can call a core capabilities yet. Um, which activities contribute most to creating value? We're going to talk about this in community management as well, but like, do you have an active following? Um, do you have um, engagement in investment communities? Do you have engagement in player communities? What do you have that can contribute to communicating, to creating value? And then thirdly, we need to be able to implement it. So we've identified our core competency. We've worked out that yes, we are in a position to use this, but how can we use it? How can we implement it? What channels can we use to communicate this value? And what channels can we leverage to um, create a flow through to new sources of value. Um, okay, so creating value 101. There, these are three main strategies, strategies for creating value. You can choose uh, one. I would say you do not have the capability, not even huge companies have the capability to excel at all three. So really what you're looking at is excelling in one of these and meeting the industry standard for the other two. <laughs> um, I've identified customer loyal, customer intimacy um, as something that I want to talk about because, again, we're going down that road of moving into entertainment companies. I feel like this is the most relevant and also most achievable for all of us. It, we can use differentiation strategies to boost customer intimacy um, at a relatively low cost compared to the other two. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, <clears throat> uh, all right. So, <laughs> graphic design is my passion. <laughs> so, as I said when I opened this talk, we are talking about value because we're talking about competition. They are one in the same, for, you know, for the purposes of this talk, for the purpose of marketing. You need to create sustained competitive advantage. What that means is you need to use value add and differentiation strategies to build yourself up into a position where you can compete, not just for like one game, it has to be sustainable. The point of adding value add strategies is that it will not only boost the value of your game, but of your company. You can build your brand using these strategies. And that might be like actually leveraging your game to create your brand. So you can, like, perhaps you want to move into an emerging market and establish yourself as a uh, VR developer, you can use these strategies to do so. Um, so, but to create this competitive advantage, you need either lower costs or superior customer value. We're not gonna look at lower costs because that is an entirely different ballpark. And as I said, superior customer value, that's where we're going. That's like an achievable thing for all of us to do. Um, it comes in three main sections. One, I would say benefits. The second is supply chain management, and the third is differentiation, which is what we're going to be looking at. So when we say benefits, what I mean is like, how, what can you give to your audience? What can you give to gamers? Is it experiential? Like, what's, what's different, what's unique about the experience that means that you can compete on benefits? Like, think about other industries, okay? Let's not, let's not get bogged down in games. Think about other industries, how they create an experience around their product. Look at something like, I don't know, 
fashion, like furla. Like when you go into furla, when I buy a furla bag, I walk into the store and it smells like a rich Italian woman is like on a couch, looking at the Amalfi Coast, having a good time. And that is completely sculpted. They know that, they want that. What's the equivalent in games? We need to think about that. How can we create these experiences around our games? How can our games be a rich Italian woman? <laughs> if you find out, let me know. Um, the other is supply chain management. Um, we're also not going to go deep into this because this, again, is a whole other ballpark of stuff. But basically, we're talking about um, delivering uh, how to optimise the delivery process of our games, how can we optimise discoverability, how can we use the processes from development to launch to build value. Um, this might come through cost optimization. it might come through um, ease of discoverability, um, but there are a whole bunch of benefits, but like I said, we're not going to go too far into that because I really want to talk about um, differentiation because, as I said, as like a main point, there are so many strategies that marketing can give you, but we need to focus on what is achievable for us. What is achievable in small scale, two to three people? What can we get done sitting around our tables planning our next game? Um, <clears throat> so let's look at our objectives. So your value strategy needs to align with your business marketing and culture goals. So What's, your, what's the goal for the game? What's the goal for your art? What's your vision? Do you want it to build or establish your company brand? brand? <laughs> Do you want it to be revenue driven? Do you just want to make enough to get off the ground? Do you want to connect to new markets? Do you want to connect to new people? Do you want to make a statement? Um, Do you want to develop a loyal fan base? So these objectives are going to affect your strategy. You need to have a good idea of what they are in mind and then build your processes around them. Every game, every business is going to have a different strategy. Your strategy for your second game will likely be completely different from your first game. I would um, take a guess and say most of your first game, you want to be revenue driven, right? So the goal for the value strategy is to get it up to a point where you can get enough money to keep your company going to start that second game. What about the second game? What's the goal for the second game? Perhaps, like I said, you want to establish a brand. You want to establish yourself in a new market. You need to think about what these goals are and then pick your differentiation strategies pick your um, <clears throat> value add strategies, design benefits around what your goal is. Okay, so let's look at some actual tangible like ex examples of how to create competitive advantage and differentiation. I've listed five, but I'm gonna talk about three because I think they are the most relevant for, as I said again, going into this idea of creating entertainment companies, creating varied value offerings, creating a product that is not just an indie game. So let's start with community management. <laughs> Great slide, Em, okay. Um, so let's talk about co-creation. Co-creation is what, when I say that, I mean like working with relevant parties, working with other parties to create the value. Usually you're gonna be working with your consumer. So how can we work with gamers to create more value, to add value into our games, into our offerings? This doesn't mean we are at the mercy of them. So one thing I would say with value is you absolutely have the power to create what value means. You do not have to tailor your value offering, tailor your game, tailor your art, tailor your vision to what you think um, people expect, what gamers value. The point of marketing is to redefine that. The point of marketing and the point of value strategy is to say, actually, no, we're not gonna compete on X, Y, Z. I've decided we're good at this and we're gonna compete on this. 
So co-creation doesn't mean talking to your fans and they're like, oh, add this feature, and then you have to add that feature because that's what they want. It's more about looking at what do they value? What, what benefits do they want? How can you create an experience that makes them feel good? How can you create an experience that makes them want to share things? Um, it's symbiotic, right? So, like, this talk is not just about you creating value for your consumer. Your consumer can create value for you. That's the whole point of community management. So, they, you can make them work for you. You can make them give you avenues of value. They can start writing fanfic and, look, that's my beautiful wife, hello. So, <laughs> uh, and doing, like, cosplay and doing fan art and fanfic and creating fan-made media that gets you more attention. This is very, very valuable. We just heard about it in the keynote, right? Even if it's weird, even if it's too much and you don't want to read it and you shouldn't, they shouldn't be doing it. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you just got to close your eyes and look the other way and say, thanks, crew. Um, but seriously, like, it's, it's symbiotic. You need to get your community on your side. Your community can be a huge source of value. And this is also where I want to talk about community management in games in general. I have a bit of a gripe because I don't think we're using our community managers and, like, our community in general to what it should be. I think that if your community manager, if all they're doing is struggling every day, trying to put out fires, trying to justify why they want to ban this person or that person, such a waste of resources. Such a waste of resources. If your community manager wants to ban someone, just let them ban them. Because don't worry about like, oh, I'm going to, I don't want to lose this player. I don't want to lose them because the opportunity cost that you're lo that you're like giving up when you waste their time when they could be working for you they could be building systems they could be building communities they could be doing outreach they could be building actual tangible value into your game into your like sphere <clears throat> and we want to make sure that they can do that so yeah, I just wanted to make that point. Like, please think about community as a point of differentiation. You should, you should sit down and plan what you want out of your community. Don't just say, I want a community. Say, what do we want? What, what do they want us, what do we want them to create? How do they, how do we want them to engage? What value do we want to get from them that we can put back into the game and then, I don't know, monetize. That would be great. Um, and oh, oh, I will also say, it also like harkens back to efficiency issues. So like in your process, you want communication to be like thorough. So if you don't have trust and intimacy throughout the process, there are going to be problems in production. You're going to second guess yourself. You're going to spend money where it shouldn't be. Um, <clears throat> okay, I can't do that. All right, let's move on. Okay, so transmedia narratives, which is the fun stuff. So I have never played Overwatch before in my life. But I will kill for my wife, Diva, which is what I assume her name is, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, okay, we have our community, but what else can we do? We've talked and I've talked a lot about creating an entertainment offering that one indie game is probably not going to be enough to distinguish yourself above the rest. It's not really going to be enough unless it's a miracle game or you get a huge influencer or some other miracle like to, to actively compete. You want to fortify it. You want to build a foundation. You don't want to risk anything. You don't want to create 
an expensive product on on the you know wish that someone will pick it up you need to fortify you need to start creating supporting products supporting media that will build its value and appeal to a wider audience and you want to get like hits in all different types of media you want gamers to think of games in the media mix as part of cinema as part of television as part of comics and this could mean like okay so we don't realistically all have access to the kind of money that you need to build amazing cinematics like Overwatch. But you can do it smaller scale. Even if you can't do like videos, you can do tweets. Say if my beautiful wife Diva had a Twitter handle, a Twitter account, I would follow her. I mean, she's not real, but I would follow her. And you can create stories through social media. You can create stories through blogs. You can create stories through your website. Any digital content, any content that you have at your disposal, you can create, you can begin building a narrative for and a narrative around. So you need to think about that as well. Like in the planning stages, I want to create a narrative across different channels. I want to have my game, but I also want to have maybe a webcomic on the website. I want to have one of our characters be on Twitter. I want to have like cool little Twitter ads uh, or Facebook ads. You need to plan that out beforehand because it will be part of your budget and it should be part of your budget. It's not an afterthought. It's a, this is my game budget, including the transmedia aspect of it. Um, <clears throat> okay, all right. So this is gonna lead into the next one. So complementary products. The, the reason why I chose transmedia is because I think the idea of complementary products and transmedia go hand in hand, right? Complementary products does not mean um, merch. What it means is, <clears throat> Designing extra products, extra things that people can buy that will give the core offering value. So look at Nintendo Switch, right? I can buy a Switch, but look at all this other stuff. Do I need it? Probably, I don't know, but I'll buy it because I feel like I probably need it. Um, so this is the idea behind complementary products. I've put Transistor up here because um, it's a great example of a game that you can tell they thought about value before they made that game. You could tell they were like, we're competing on soundtrack. We're competing on aesthetic. That was like a conscious decision. And I don't even need to talk to the devs. I can feel it. Because what they're doing is creating an experience around music and then taking that music and creating a soundtrack that you can buy. And you need to think about that. You need to think what design choices can I make that will help me boost revenue in the future? You don't need to make the soundtrack day one, but you need to give yourself the option. You need to lay the path for this kind of thinking. Um, I'll also mention, so they're usually at higher margins, so it means like this stuff will probably be more expensive than the actual game. So this is for the super fans that you're going to foster in your community building section of your differentiation strategy, right? This is for the super fans. Um, it might also include things like um, online access and designing for comp competition or eSport. If you have a plan to make your game online, you might want to think about, well, in the future, do I want to create competition? Do I want to have, like leaderboards? Do I want uh, paid entry into these competitions? Is this a reasonable, uh, achievable goal? Um, <clears throat> so, value propositions. This is where it all comes together. This is the statement where you're like concisely communicating all the decisions that you've made in the positioning value add stage. So it's a benefit statement that accurately and concisely communicates core value of your game slash studio slash offering. What, again, 
these value strategies, they can be applied not only to games, you can do a value strategy for your business. Um, so let's look at Wii, because I think it's a great example. Um, so active social gaming in your living room. It's concisely like communicated the core value of what Nintendo wanted to get out of it. And I wanted to talk about this example as well because it's a perfect example of what I was talking about before, about like redefining competition. The Wii redefined competition, right? Before the Wii, Nintendo could not compete with Xbox or, or PlayStation. They were competing on hardware. And then Nintendo was like, nah, nah, we're not doing that. We're not competing against hardware because we can't do it. So what they did was, just created a space where they had no competition, right? They appealed to people that weren't traditional gamers. They brought gaming into the home and they weren't afraid to do that. And the Wii launched a huge success. So I have a bit of an audience participation for you now. <clears throat> yeah. So let's, come on, let's, let's do a value proposition, guys. Uh, Assassin's Creed, who wants to start? You don't have to say a whole sentence, you can just say real words. Yes, at the back. Hello, yes, Jen. Nice to see you. Great. I would say running into people. <laughs> yes. It lets you fulfill a fantasy of being an assassin. Of being cool wearing a hoodie. You <laughs> <laughs> see people wear hoodies and then every time you wear a hoodie nowadays you just start thinking, what if I have this hidden blade right now? <laughs> and I'm sure that was a conscious design decision. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? Should we move on? Oh, yeah. Reliving history, historical events. Great. Mm -hmm. Yes? Cassandra's arm. Oh. <laughs> You're speaking my language. Okay, Stardew Valley, let's go. Let's practice this. Come on, you can do it. Yes? Everyone who's disappointed that there weren't new Harvest Moon games. <laughs> I mean, I understand what you're getting at but you probably can't use that for your value proposition. <laughs> um, yes? Sense of calm. Sense of calm, great. The back? Um, I think having like gaming experiences in a sort of a safe space with no direct imposition or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An environment that I can control where I have clear progression. Awesome. Um, okay, let's move on because I need to wrap it up. Okay. So... <laughs> Let's bring all this discussion back to the question of innovation and how we can innovate as an industry. Um, what can we say when we make our game and we bring it to a publisher or an investor and they're like, great, but can you make it more like online mobile Clash of Clans-ish? Also, have you heard of blockchain? <laughs> like, what do you say to that? Honestly, there's not like a great answer. What you need is to have an argument to hit back. What you need to say is like, we're not going to do that because we've already thought about delivering value and we've already got a strategy in place for building a community, for building a brand, for creating other avenues of revenue. That's the best way to hit back. Um, what does it tell us? about innovating as an industry. Does anyone have an answer? Well, I don't, so we move on. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just want to make the point that, like, um, we need to... We want to innovate, right? We want to become the new guard of the games industry. We want to create our visions. We want to create art. And we can absolutely do that, but... Innovation requires support structure and a good foundation. And that's what this talk is, has been about. <clears throat> so, let's recap. How do we compete? We can redefine what value means. Developers are able to change the way gamers perceive value in the market. And we can do that by creating a space 
for, co for competition. We can build cohesive systems that deliver more value than competitors. We pick a differentiation strategy that fits your goals, needs, and capabilities. And we raise or change expectations by combining it with innovative storytelling, our art, our vision. <clears throat> so what's value? Whoops, sorry. That's my timer. Let me do my dramatic speech and then we can move on. Um, <clears throat> so what's value? I'm gonna use my personal hero, Joe McMillan, to kind of wrap up here. So games aren't the thing, right? They're the thing that gets us to the thing. So change is the thing. Art is the thing. Innovation is the thing. And we can get there without reaching the crisis point of crumbling foundations, but we need to do that through creating a shared value over channels and over people and over technologies. We need to be creating an equilibrium that acts as a stable foundation for change. And that's what I think value is. Thank you. Please follow me. Cool, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, any thoughts on brand building for ego versus product differentiation for a game and when to do each? Sorry, I missed what you said. Sorry. Thoughts of brand building for a studio yep. versus product differentiation for a game and when to focus on each of those? It really depends on how much resources you have. Um, brand building can start day one and you should. You, should, you can do, day one, a value strategy for your brand, for your company, and then a separate one from your, for your game. You don't need to <clears throat> wait at all. You'll probably end up changing that plan, but if you are conscious of the brand you know you want to build with um, the game that you have, like if you have a vision in mind, then you can sit down and plan your value strategy. You can say, okay, my first game, what do I want it to achieve? It's gonna be harder because you're gonna have a lot less resources, but it is like possible to begin that process. Uh, anyone else? Yes, the bag. You can look at comparable benefits in other products. So, I mean, I don't want to tell you to be like, you know, it's Clash of Clans, meet X. But you can look at, like, uh, what do people value from that genre? What features do they value? What, um, so it might be competition. It might be the platform. Like, what are they valuing from that game? What are they valuing from that comparable product? And you can bring that in. You can say, well, this is different, but we've seen, we have proof that uh, consumers love X, Y, and Z in these other games, um, and we're including them in this one. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Anyone else? Well, if you think of anything... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, That's hard because how are you going to track it? Um, sentiment and engagement is excellent. I would focus on social media, looking at the engagement levels on your social. Again, like it's hard to answer this question because I don't know the specific situation and I also don't know how, much, how many resources you're looking at and what stage you're at. But um, if I were creating, like looking at measuring value, um, I would look at my look to my community, look at how engaged they are. Also, just straight up ask them. Um, you can look at figures like return on investment after 
after launch, but this is positioning, this is before launch. So um, I would suggest like really focusing on community first and yeah, sorry. If I think of anything else, I'll tweet. Yeah. And if you think of any questions, you can tweet at me. No? Okay, thank you. Have a good kick, Kurt. <laughs>